Hello and welcome. And uh, in front of me, in case you hadn't noticed, is a big bloody white box. Now, first of all, I must say that uh, our location today has changed. This is the sofa in the living room. Bit of action styling, isn't it? Uh, this is because the uh, the floor of the Geek Lab is covered in an SMD soldering project and a Game Gear project. Hmm. Bits all over the place, and then this has come into my hands and has jumped the queue because of certain things, which I'm about to explain. Now, went skip diving the other day, well, yesterday, and uh, pulled this out. Now, what this is is, apart from a huge white box, it's a 286 laptop. Uh, from my compact from 1986. Now, if I pull these two latches here, opens up, she does, and there it is. Now, you're seeing this at the moment in pretty much the state I found it, which is not good. Uh, it has a little parts trick here the keyboard comes off, it has rests. And there you go. You can sit there separately and shuffle around so you can see. There you go. Yes, that's quite good. Apparently, these were the uh, one of the first laptops. May I have this wrong? One of the first laptops to have a hard drive and a VGA monitor. Now, this one has some issues, major issues, which is why it's jumped the queue. Uh, first of all, We've got no power to it. The battery's gone. <coughs> History. Uh, we can't find the power adapter, so if anybody can help... Yes, it does say junk on there. Somebody's written junk. So we don't know why it's junk, but we're going to find out. If anybody can help, it has one of these priority slots, which looks more like a... Hmm. Looks more like a comms cable. That's the power. I thought it was a comms cable at first, but if you look on the back... Under this flap, there is no power slot. So, that is the only explanation for the power. Plus, it's right by that, so it makes sense that that's the power. So, if anybody can help me with knowing where there might be a power adapter or some specs on this, I do know it's 18.3 volts DC. That's all I know. Don't know the amperage or the, the pin out on it. So if anybody uh, knows where I might be able to get an adapter or can get a pin out for this so I can try and make one or adapt one, that would be great. Now obviously it's filthy. Now the other problem we've got with it, major problem, is that it's been in a rainstorm and when I pour, picked it up, water poured out the side where the hard drive is quite a bit, well moderate amount, so I'd say it was half flooded. So this is why it's jumped the queue. It's about to get stripped, dried out, and we'll check what damage there is from that. Oh, by the way, geek chic. Oh yeah, handle for carrying it. Uh, so yes, 286. If it's working, it's 30 to 40 megabyte. Uh, 20. It's somewhere between 20 and 40 megabyte hard drive, and there. I don't know what size drive they are, whether they're PC drives with the an early one or laptop drives, so we'll find that out when we go in, if there is one in there. If not, I'm sure we can source a hard drive. I uh, haven't looked too, too much into its tech spec at the moment, but I believe it runs on DOS, not Windows, which will make sense because it's a monitor. Uh, Spaceball is collapsed, but that's not going to be difficult to fix, he says. <coughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm going to strip it, and as usual, I'll be right back. Right, a short while later, <laughs> it took me a while to get this thing uh, detached, and you can see at the moment loads wet in here and wet in the case. Uh, no corrosion, you can see bits of water around, there's no corrosion. As for the board, uh, well, 
there's bits of polythene and stuff in here and the bits of the board I can see don't appear to be wet so that's no conclusive evidence but it seems that the board may have escaped other good news there's a hard drive in here now whether it works don't know we can test it in the, the beast just to see if it fires up uh, might not be able to read it because I don't know but we can try it. We can also try this drive in the beast as well. So let's keep stripping. That's a fair piece of uh, engineering. That that actually weighs quite a bit, even if you take into account the weight of the drive. Still weighs quite a bit. So we shall continue. Right, about an hour later. That was not an easy job. It stripped, and uh, well. Let me take you through it. Uh, take it off there. Right. The motherboard. Main concern. Uh, top turned out to be completely dry. Nothing at all. Bottom. <coughs> uh, it has some water marks on it. So it's still wet because this video has been taken straight after it's stripped. I've done nothing. So there's still, still just about to see water there. Now. Nah. I am amazed because I didn't expect us to see that these are all SMC, SMDs, SMCs, whatever you want to call them, surface mounted components. Didn't realise they were using them back then. But, uh, yeah, it's quite amazing. It also has something called piggyback memory, which is here. Uh, don't know much about that. But we have the internet. Uh, so, quick to the board there, this processor, with uh, probably a factory mod there, this usually happened those times, there it is, yes, uh, hard drive, got a bit of water on the bottom, nothing major, uh, apparently these can be 20 or 30 megabytes, don't know what this is, going to look it up on the net, See if that can help me. But it was nice and dry on the top, so that's fine. Power supply was horizontally mounted, sorry, vertically mounted at the back. Uh, it was completely dry, and capacitors and everything look good. That's a mean power supply, isn't it? I like that. Uh, right, keyboard. Obviously, that wasn't wet. This one needs working up. This is the top of the frame. You can see some of the water there that was in it. Uh, no corrosion though because it was only out for a day, so main case, you can see the water in there. Yes, that's where it poured out. Lovely. Uh, so, yeah, some retro bright and uh, uh, some white spirits to get the stuff off the top of the monitor. Hopefully this monitor works. I have no way, no idea how to get in there if it's broken and have a look. Not that I know much in how to fix these things, but hopefully it works. Uh, that's the shielding from the hard drive. Floppy it was dry. Even if it doesn't work, it's just a generic PC floppy, so. Uh, just swap the doors over. No big task. We'll be testing these in the Pentium 120 later. Uh, back of the case, as you can see, water got in there, and oh, shielding from the motherboard. You can see the water sitting on the bottom there. So, let's dry these off, leave these for a few days, test these drives in another system to see if we can get power to them, and uh, if I can find out. Also, oh no, I can't because I haven't got the power adapter yet. But the power adapters are available on eBay at a reasonable price, apparently. So we can get this tested. Off. Right, so. Oh, and that's the light. Lights from the front of the case. So, uh, I'm going to leave this for a few days to dry out and put it back together. Thank you. Very much. Um, yeah, thank you all very much. Right, it's now two days later, and uh, 
I think things have had a chance to dry, so where is the computer? Well, it's all over the place. Uh, there's bits in here, there's bits in the bedroom. But, it's put together day! Woohoo! Now, uh, I may have to take it apart again for a couple of reasons. A. Uh, have no power supply for this at the moment, so we can't test it fully. Uh, we might be able to get a power supply in the next couple of months. If not, I might... Uh, I've been told you can di uh, directly solder a power supply to the battery terminals. Uh, yeah. So let me think. Let me uh, know what you think of that. If you've got any knowledge. The other problem, I can foresee, assuming it does fire up, is that this thing on the main board here has a Dallas clock chip. Uh, battery in there, which probably by now is. <coughs> Kaput Kapauk dead. So there is a modification I may have to do to that uh, to connect an external battery for it so that it runs again. So everything is now nice and dry. The main motherboard is dry. Uh, the case I washed yesterday, just moving the lights here, uh, the case I washed yesterday and also took the keyboard apart and worked on the uh, spacebar now the spacebar this is a common problem with old computers when this was flat wouldn't come up when I turned it over usual problem one of these sides had slipped out but when you put the sides back in uh, still gets stuck I think it's due to because of age, this bar, which keeps them level, bends as you can see. So, uh, yes, it still won't come up. So what I have to do is, where are you? Take the clips. Do, do, do. Oops, there we are. Take the clips out of the usual home, which would be in between those two there. And drop them beneath. Uh, it means you, you lose a... You lose the fact that it goes down level. If you hit one side, just one side will go down. But uh, there's no other way I can see of fixing them. So it's compromised, but it works. Well, theory, I haven't tested this one, but it does work. So it's time to put this back together and the whole thing back together. Uh, strange keyboard, you actually have, have to take some of the keys out because the, the screw holes are beneath the keys. So, uh, interesting. I'm going to have to get a uh, a tie for this bit. A little tie thing in there to hold it in place. I had to cut that to get it out. So, let's see if I can find one of them. If not, we'll just put it back together without it. Or we'll improvise something. I'll be right back. Okay, I found one. I've started wrapping it around. Uh, change the camera. So it's not in my way while I'm putting this thing back together. So, but I thought you might like to see this. Uh, hmm. This whole process, if it goes well, uh, so I should be speeding this up. Uh, so let's be luck, and here we go. Right, time for some commentary, so you're left with not left with any no sound. If that makes sense. Right, keyboard done. Now the strange thing I found where there was the uh, some of the screws actually go through the keys themselves, which is a bit weird. But uh, now we're starting to put the motherboard uh, back together. Uh, what you saw me doing there with the upper board there again is trying to work out which screws go through the motherboard itself and which screws will later go through that top shield because some of them screw right through the motherboard but some just go through the motherboard and some go through the shielding to the motherboard this is actually the second time uh, I put the motherboard in because there's a plastic uh, cover that goes under the motherboard and I forgot to install that the first time so we basically got the shield on a uh, good tip is to sort, as you can see on the left hand side there, sort all your screws into different sizes. That will make life much easier. Uh, keep them safe, obviously. Now, just putting the power supply in the back there, it's at uh, this point coming up that I realise I haven't quite sorted my screws into 
enough sizes because I'm now finding that the screws won't fit onto the floppy drive side. Uh, the floppy drive actually sits slightly up off the case, obviously, to get air underneath it. We're now discovering that I've only got one screw of the right size at all, which means the other screws are somewhere else, which means I've got to go back in and find those screws. So I start stripping, uh, have a look in the motherboard, no, they're not there, no, where the hell could they be? Turns out they're in the port on the back. So uh, they come out, and we repeat the process and start putting it back together again. Hey, it's all good practice. I'll probably have to go in again sometime to correct the clock. Nice cup of tea. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah, so that thing in the back left I just put on is the power supply unit. Uh, it has an external PSU, but also has, a, has an internal, obviously, to distribute the power. Right, floppy going on, second time. And we got the screws this time. Although for a second I cannot find one of the screws on the floor. It does turn up though. Right, hard drive going in. Easy peasy. Uh, putting the screws in the motherboard. Get caught out here again in a second, as you'll see. Yes, <laughs> good to put that unit on the front and realise that the screws go through that too. So, right, going into the main case. Slides in the back. Monitor on first. Power supply through. And having trouble because that bloody power supply lead is thick, huge, and does not give at all. Okay, trying to put the hinges on but could not find which screws it was. I've got about five selections left. Half of them were long, so I had to uh, keep trying different screws until we got there. Which we did in the end. Although I'm still, as you can see, struggling! And it keeps falling off. <laughs> there you go, it keeps falling off as you try and put it on. So, there we go, sliding on the back, screws. Almost did. Putting the covers on. Uh, yes, I didn't realise at this point you can't put the covers on until you put the back on. And yes, I have taken my jumper off because I was getting bloody hot with all the brain power I needed to put this bugger back together. Here. Yes. Oops, a bit of a dress there, but uh, that's covered. Fortunately, my little handy black blobs cover that up. My little indiscretion there. I must manage to just put black tape over it on future. That's much easier. That left hand one, uh, turns out the little tab is broken at the bottom. So could not get it to go on and the back yes the back I had uh, the selection of different size screws left and well they all appeared to fit keyboard arm done right and uh, quite a few painful moments later here she is looking a hell of a lot better disturbing thing I'm finding as usual is that there are screws left over. Although, uh, one, two, two of them are from this project over here. Okay, they may not be from this. <laughs> they might be from others that are still lying around. So, there we go. That just come up nice, actually. Uh, keys are still yellow, but space bar now works. Nice and there. Uh, cream again and uh, I don't think she actually needs some moisture right now no looks good clean mmm there you go lovely right thank you very much now next stage for this is get a power supply for it once we've done that we can try and boot it uh, I suspect the clock battery will be empty so I'm going to have to modify that chip which means going in it again <laughs> But there we go. And uh, apart from that, yes. Sorry I couldn't show you some of the video because there's markings behind here that give away where I work and I uh, don't want that. But yes. Uh, and the diagnostics disc, which I've been told is on the way to me, so thank you very much. Uh, apart from that, I hope this boots off 1.44 megabyte discs because I have some. 
we shall see. First job, get power, so hopefully, shortly, we'll get some power first. Nice find. Enjoyed fixing that, as far as we've got so far. Thank you very much.